One of my favorite things in the world to do is watch Friends. I know it's been off for years and years. It's not even around, but I still find myself binge watching old episodes. And I was thinking about this today and thinking it's the predictability of the friends in the circle, right? You have Chandler with his quirkiness, Monica with her type A of just everything has to be so neat and tidy and organized. It's Phoebe's ability to make you laugh at her silly songs. Ross always comes in with those smart comments and Joey and him and his food, like it is just so hilarious. And of course, Rachel, she just brings everybody together and it's just such this beautiful, cohesive team of people. And it's why I wanted to come on and share with you today that I have an opportunity for you to find your friends in the content creation space. So if you are thinking about creating your first or your next digital course, I don't want you to miss this opportunity because Amy Porterfield just opened the doors for registration for her course, Confident Bootcamp. And I'm actually offering a special bonus for anyone that registers for the course. Course Confident Bootcamp through my special link. So I want you to go to crystalprofit.com forward slash Amy dash bootcamp to register. That's crystalprofit.com forward slash Amy dash bootcamp. And what you're going to find when you get there is I have this special bonus private podcast series. It's called Money Mindset for Creators. So I want you to go register for Amy's bootcamp download the podcast and immediately start listening to it because what this training is set up to do is to help you get your mind right about monetizing your content, making money so that you can fuel your content creation dreams. So go to crystalprofit.com forward slash Amy dash bootcamp to register for course confident. And I cannot wait for you to find your friends and find the people that will be there for you. Do you see what I did there? Yeah. Nice little friends segue connection. Go to crystalprofit.com forward slash Amy dash bootcamp. And I cannot wait to see you inside. Okay. Let's get into today's episode. Have you ever listened to a podcast that has changed your life? I know, it sounds silly almost, and it sounds very dramatic, but if you are someone that has been listening to podcasts for a few years, maybe even a few months, you know how profound this medium can be. It's why I love it. It's why I still listen to, I mean, I could tell you how many hours I could actually go and look on my phone, but I'm not going to. I'm not going to shame myself for how much I indulge in podcast listening every single week. But let me just tell you, it's a lot. It is a whole, whole lot. And I can remember specific moments of lessons learned, of laughing so hard that I'm crying, of having my cheeks hurt because I'm smiling so big when someone's telling an absolutely ridiculous story, or just feeling so moved and overwhelmed with emotion because of someone sharing their story, which is exactly where today's guest comes into the picture. Because I can remember when I first heard Bevan tell her story and it took my breath away. It really did because not only was it very powerful, it's very real in the sense that it's not just about business, right? We talk so much on this podcast about content and strategy and business and how can you monetize and make money and all these other things. But at the end of the day, it's about so much more than that. It's about you sharing your story in a way that compels people to either do audacious things, believe in themselves, feel motivated, inspire them. And I think that Bevan's story is all of those. So I don't want to give away her story because it's so profound. But I can tell you this, after you listen to today's episode, you will be moved and you will be motivated to hug your loved ones a little bit tighter and to think about what are the things that 
I've been putting off doing until someday, until one day. Maybe you're listening to this right now and you're like, yeah, I've been waiting to start my podcast or I've been waiting to launch my website. I've been waiting, I've been waiting. After today's episode, I hope that you have a different outlook on that. And I just, I don't even want to spoil anything else. So here is my interview with Bevan. Welcome to The Profit Podcast, where we teach you how to start, launch, and market your content with confidence. I'm your host, Crystal Profit, and I'm so excited that you're here. Thanks for hanging out with me today, because if you've been trying to figure out the world of content creation, this is the show that will help be your time-saving shortcut. So let's get right to it, shall we? All right, Profit Podcast listeners, I'm super excited about today's guest because I've known about you, Bevan, for a while, but we haven't officially met and I'm so happy to see your face and be able to chat with you today. So welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. It is always kind of funny when I tell people my story, they're like, oh, I've heard about you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, okay, that's good. It's good. The message is getting out there. <laughs> exactly. What you're doing is working. So keep that up, like yeah. check all the boxes <laughs> and keep going in that direction. But yeah, yeah I, I originally heard about you from AV Porterfield and this was a few years ago at this point. And, um, I think back to your story was so powerful and so impactful and, um, it's what you're sharing for so many organizations, we, I'd love to chat about that too. It's like the journey that you're on, but for someone that doesn't know your story and who you are, can you share a little bit about, um, how you got started and what it is you do today? Yeah, absolutely. Way back in 2019, we all remember that way back then, right. When life was a little bit different than it is now, (laughs) but mother's day of 2019, my husband, Mark surprised me with tickets to France for my 40th birthday, which would be in November. So six months to plan super romantic, but we had two kids under the age of three. So we had to plan. So we set about planning. My youngest daughter was two at the time and my son was four months old. And two weeks after that, I went in for my annual review thinking I was getting promoted and instead I got let go. Mm. So all of a sudden our life is flipped upside down. Like I said, we had a four month year old, a four month old at home. We had just bought a new van. I had taken money out of savings to take a full maternity leave. And a couple of weeks after that, Mark and I were out on a walk. We live in the country, so no sidewalks, just walking down the street. And I said, you know, babe, I don't want to look for a job. And he was an engineer, so I could like feel his stress skyrocket. (laughs) But I told him, I said, this is the third time in under 10 years that I have lost my job for one reason or another, and I am tired of it. I do Mm -hmm. not want to put the financial health of our family into the hands of any one person ever again. And I told him that I wanted to take everything that I'd been doing. So as a digital marketer, a launch manager, a brand director for these multi-million dollar brands. And I wanted to help small businesses and entrepreneurs grow their business to five, six, and seven figures. You know, this sounds very familiar to you, right? Like We want to grow our businesses through content. And I said, let's just try it as a proof of concept. See if I can make $5,000 by the end of August. And if I, and I'll still look for jobs, but if I can do this, this is what I want to do. And so June, zero dollars, July, a thousand dollars. I hit my $5,000 goal by the end of August. And by the time we were ready to go for the trip, I had made $35,000 in my business. So we were super excited. The business was taking off, but we still felt like it was totally crazy to leave our two kids for three or four days. It was such a fast trip. We were going to be in planes the same amount of time we were on the ground in Bordeaux. So I said, this is crazy. We just should not go. Let's reschedule. We decided to go and we had an incredible time, delicious wine, amazing food, wandering through the city with my best friend and the love of my life and reconnecting to who we were as a couple before we had kids and before we got married. We came home from that trip and it was Thanksgiving week. So we had taken the week off work and we're just doing stuff around the house again, pre-pandemic. So we had 25 people coming for Thanksgiving. And then the day after Thanksgiving, I went upstairs to wake up Mark and he wasn't breathing and he had passed away in the middle of the night, completely unexpectedly. We had no idea this was coming. He had undiagnosed heart disease. So one of his arteries was 95% blocked and the other was 50% blocked. So now I am 
a solo parent of two kiddos under the age of three. I have a business that's growing, but it has not yet stood the test of time. And I'm the sole financial provider without my biggest cheerleader by my side. And so now I, my life had truly been tripped up, flipped upside down. And about a month after that, I made a post on social media talking about that trip, talking about my birthday, talking about losing Mark. And I said, whenever you're faced with a choice, just take the damn trip. And that really resonated with people. And I got so many messages from people just saying, you know, I took this trip with my dad before he passed away and it meant the world to me, or I was going to say no to this trip with my girlfriends, but now I'm going to say yes. And, but more importantly, I started to hear from people that were saying, I'm not going to push my big dreams to the side anymore. And that was where the start of the take the damn chance movement was because I changed it because when I, people heard take the damn trip, they thought I was a travel agent. <laughs> and so it's take the damn chance. And I say the word damn all the time, but it does stand for something. So it stands for decide and declare, attend your own party, moments, not minutes, and now is the time. And so I created the do the damn thing method. And every good thing that I have done in my life, because I looked back at how did I navigate losing Mark? And how did I navigate? I lost my home in a house fire in 2010. I lost my dad to cancer when I was 24. My kids are IVF babies. So I was looking at how did I get go through all of these hard things? And then how did I create these amazing things? I grew Collaborate.Work, my business, from zero to $300,000 in 18 months, even in the middle of the pandemic and grieving my husband. I then grew Take the Damn Chance from zero to $300,000 in 24 months while going after my biggest dream, which was Mark and I were about 60 days away from starting our next round of IVF. And so in 2021, I had Mark's and my daughter 20 months after he passed away. So every single good thing that I've done has been from the do the damn thing method that I was learning. So we craft our damn manifesto, we find our damn people and we do the damn thing. And so I'm so passionate about sharing this framework because it can be applied to your business, your relationships, your parenting, all of the things, all of the areas where you want to create incredible things. Can we just pause for a mic drop? I was like, (laughs) that was a lot. (laughs) Everybody can take a breath now. It's so, okay. So like I said, I knew your story. I've heard your story, but to hear you, I don't know how often people tell you, but you're an incredible storyteller. And maybe you're like, Crystal, this is my life. Like, this isn't really (laughs) a story, but, but it is like the way that, I mean, I just want to pause for a second and say, thank you so much for being vulnerable and for sharing your message, because I do think, and there's, there's just so much power. There's so much power. And I know that there's someone listening right now that is going through something hard. They're in the thick of the struggle and they are looking for a lifeline. And so I hope that in hearing your story, they can not only see that, you know, it is a, you can come out on the other side of something that's really hard, but there's also resources. There's also people to turn to because I can only imagine that you were probably in the middle of some of this chaos of any of the different tragedies that you've gone through. And you were looking for a resource, someone like who has gone through this that can help me because I, I mean, that that's only my take on it. So is, is what you've created, you know, with do the damn method and all the different things that you've done. Is it what you wish you would have had? Like, let's let's talk a little bit more about that because I love how specific the framework is and how yeah. it's, you know, a great play on words. And it's, you fired me up. I'm not going to lie. I'm like, this was like a Tony <laughs> Robbins seminar. All of a sudden it's like, do the damn thing. I'm like, yes, I'm sold. <laughs> yeah. I want to hear more about that. <laughs> yeah. So really it was looking backwards because people will say, oh, you, were you born knowing this, right? Like, no. But when I looked back at all of those hard things, what was it that I do differently? Like not better than anybody else, but differently to navigate those yeah. things with some grace and some creativity. And I think that for all everyone listening who is trying to create content in the world for a long time, I was like, well, that's just who I am, right? It's I'm just Bevin. And I think that we do our audience a disservice when we don't dig deeper than that. Mm 
because for a while, like with my first business collaborate at work, I did it. I was, I was executing launches. I was in the thick of it. And I said, well, I couldn't possibly teach somebody how to do this. It's just innate. And so when I started to look at the do the damn thing method, I had to break it down into, yeah, but what had I done? And so the very first piece of it is to craft your damn manifesto. And that is your yes and your six dimensional why. So a lot of times people will say, you know, what's your why? Are you doing it for your kids or are you doing it for financial freedom? That's not deep enough because if you're doing it for financial freedom and you haven't made any money in six months, it's real easy to say, I think it would just be better if I got a job. But if you flesh out a full six dimensional why, which is um, the six important areas of your life, financial, emotional, mental, physical, social, and spiritual, then for me, my damn manifesto is to share the damn framework with as many people as possible in as many ways as possible in order to create a sustainable, thriving business that both supports and inspires my family and the world. Sounds very long, but I have crafted it. It's why my book, Your Damn Manifesto, is all about crafting that because it's simple to say, easy to remember, and it's the touchstone that when financially I'm growing something and I'm not making as much money, I can rest on the... But socially, I get to work with who I want to, and I get to inspire my kids. Or mentally, I get to solve interesting new problems. Right. That's why that's the craft your damn manifesto. It is the touchstone you use to hold everything up to it and say, is this in service of that? And then the second piece that I've just really started digging into more and more is the find your damn people. Because when I look back at what I what I did really well, like when, I, when my house burned down, I wasn't, I didn't have my damn manifesto, but I did have my damn people and my people carried me through that. When I got laid off, I thought that I had my people, but here was this company that had just let me go. So I was looking at where was it that all three pieces fit. And that has been since I started the take the damn chance movement. I know my damn manifesto. I have my damn people and I'm doing the damn thing. And when we think about the people, because you asked if I was like looking for those resources, right? I think that in every important area of our lives, we need three types of allies. And that is we need the person or people who are walking the path about the same place that we are. So we need entrepreneurs who are starting out or when you're a little bit further, we need entrepreneurs who are, um, about three to five years in, right? If you're a mom, I had to look at, I didn't just need mom friends. I needed mom friends who had children under the age of seven yeah. because that's different than a 17 year old. Yeah. And so you need that. Then you need a guide or a mentor. And sometimes that's a coach or somebody that you hire. Sometimes it is somebody who's further along the path that you are actually asking for advice, not that they're just giving unsolicited advice, but somebody that you want to guide you. And then you need an inspiration. So you need somebody where you can say, I want that element. So if you're if you're thinking about your marriage, same thing. If you've been just a newlywed, you need other newlyweds in your life. If you are, you might you want a guide and a mentor who can give you some feedback when things are getting a little rocky and you need somebody's relationship to say, that's what we want. And those are the three pieces. And some of those will carry over, right? Like some mom friends are also your married friends, but doing that will help you elevate any area of your life where you feel like you're struggling. Being a woman in business comes with its own unique set of challenges, but also so many opportunities. We get ahead by leaning in to what makes us different from business as usual. I'm Samantha Hartley, host of Profitable Joyful Consulting, inviting you to a special six-episode series exploring the experience of being a woman in business. You want to hear from women consultants who've hit a million dollars, who sell six-figure engagements, or who've broken their own revenue ceilings? Yeah, those are my clients, and they'll be sharing too. Join me for six must-listen episodes that tackle key challenges for women consultants. Follow Profitable Joyful Consulting on your favorite podcast app. 
I love this so much because specifically when it comes to accountability, when I think about content creation, right? Cause you're a podcaster mm -hmm. and we all know everybody that's listening, they have content. They want to create content. They're dreaming about creating content. There's like, those are the three levels that everybody's at here listening to this show. Yeah. And we all know it's hard sometimes. Like it yeah. is hard to rally and say, all right, I'm actually going to record this episode or I'm going to yeah. hit publish even though I'm scared. So I'm curious, what did that look like for you? Like who, who were your damn people when you were thinking about putting your message out into the world for the very first time? Like go back to yeah. the very like Genesis moment where you said, I want to share my story because I think it's important. So actually, hang on, let me back up real fast because I'm curious. Were people asking you to share your story because they knew that you had a very significant thing, experience that yeah. you had gone through? Or is it something that you said, you know what, I'm going to share this and see how the world reacts to it? How did that unfold? Yeah. A little bit of both. So I just started talking. A lot of people had heard about me losing Mark. And so I did share that. And I think that part of the reason I'm so passionate about sharing the stories that are in my life, not just losing Mark, but the fertility journey that I was on and entrepreneurial, all of these things is that I think when we share our stories, everybody feels a little less isolated and a little less alone. You don't have to share from the wound. You can share from the scar, right? I shared a bit more vulnerably right after Mark passed away. But when I decided to get pregnant using the embryos that we had frozen, I didn't share that until I was 12 weeks pregnant. So I wasn't, it wasn't like I was sitting in the car outside of the fertility doctor saying like, Hey, come along on this journey with me. I did some recording of things I might want to share, but I, I ended up never sharing it because I didn't, that wasn't the story that I wanted people. I didn't want people in the office with me. I wanted to then share the, this is what I've done. I'm so excited. I will then share my daughter's birth and, you know, like obviously again, not in the hospital room, but <laughs> yeah. share that she, people do that. And I'm like, well, take a break, take it's a maternity a too leave close. of at least like <laughs> three days. But so we can share from where we feel comfortable. Um, so people were no, hearing the story because I was talking about it. I actually went did a lot of Facebook lives and I did a summit before I started my podcast. My podcast is less than a year old. And it's so funny what you just said about the days where we are like, oh, I don't want to push publish. I just had this conversation literally an hour ago with a coach I work with on my podcast about, yeah, I uh, kind of phoned it in for a couple episodes because I didn't know what to record, but I felt I had to publish something. And he was like, yeah, that's okay. We do that sometimes. Yeah. Um, but I was sharing the story and sharing the stories. And so I saw that people were interested in that. And I was figuring out where I wanted to be in the world. I work with a lot of entrepreneurs. And for a while, that was my heavy focus was around growing the damn business. I don't want to just do that, which is when I started to, when I launched my podcast, which is called All the Damn Things. And so all the damn things is business, but it's also relationships, it's parenting, it's going after your big dreams. Um, I What I have done well and what I encourage people to think about is building this framework because the reason I have it, I keep testing it to see, does it work in every area? And so far it does. So I know that the damn framework can be applied to any area. But by creating an acronym that is really easy for me to remember and for other people to remember, one, it makes it memorable. And two, it's really easy for me to talk about it in any, in any conversation. I don't have to think about what content am I going to share with, with you today? I'm going to see where it goes and I'm going to know that I can go back to the D, the A, the M, the N and share that. Which is so fun because we actually talked about that right before we started recording is because I am, there are podcast hosts that like to have things very scripted and we're going to mm -hmm. have, these are my 10 questions and we're going to hit every single one of them. And this is, I'm going to send them to you beforehand and you're going to know exactly what's going to flow. I'm not that podcast host. Yeah. I am more of, 
oh, I know who you are. I know about you. And maybe there are some very specific questions I want to ask, but I like things to unfold organically because those are the types of podcasts that I really enjoy yeah. listening to. I don't like to listen to ones that sound scripted or like, oh, they, they practice that before yeah. they came on. Like that, that sounded a little robotic to me, you know, but, and everyone has their own place in the podcasting space. But I love what you said about you go back to the framework every time. It's almost like you've taken out that piece that like complicates things of what am I going to talk about? What am I going to teach? Like, you're like, I know for sure it's going to fall in this category of the framework. It's just, yeah. where do we want the conversation to go? So have you found that it, it just makes a lot of your content creation that much easier? Yes and no. So I agree with you on the podcast, like the podcast that unfold and the content that unfolds, like you're involved in a conversation. Like if you're listening to this and you're like, oh my gosh, I feel like I'm right there in the room. Yeah. Then isn't that so much more engaging? I have been on a couple of podcasts where they're like, here's the 10 questions that I'm going to ask you. We've never gotten through all of them. <laughs> yes, because, it like never I was just on one recently and she didn't do her traditional like lightning round at the end. She's like, it just, you know what? We just were in, in the moment. So I'm with you on that. <laughs> so it does make it easier for me to have conversations and to, to share content that way to go live. It doesn't necessarily make it any easier when I'm sitting at my desk thinking, what should I talk about? As I, and I think I want to say that because I think as content creators, we all have that feeling. And then we see other people sharing their stuff and they're like, oh my gosh, it must be so easy for her. Right. But it's, it's not always like, I still need to think what's the prompt? What do people want to hear about? And then how can I apply my methodology to that question? Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think I appreciate your honesty because that is super helpful, especially because, uh, and I said this recently on another interview, I think it's great that my audience hears all the different perspectives of different creators in this space, because we are all so different and unique. Yeah. We have these, there's like a few key struggles that all of us face, you know, how does editing work? How do I turn on my mic? Did I turn on my mic? You know, <laughs> like some of these I, things. I checked before we started, <laughs> yeah. do I have the right mic on? Exactly. And I didn't. So I switched it. <laughs> yes, exactly. Like there's, there's some key things that will be, you know, like the struggles and the obstacles that all of us face. And then there's other ones that like you were saying earlier, it's almost like this isolating feeling is like, am I the only one that struggles with this? And so I appreciate just how, how willing you are to share your journey. And like you said earlier, it's not just stories of, you know, these larger experiences. It's like, this is my, this is just my story. It's not all of the stories. This is just my life and I'm happy to share it. So I'm curious because uh, I, I get this question a lot from podcasters in this community. They want to know where that boundary is. And I know it's different for everybody, but is there any specific instance where you've kind of butted up against something and you're like, I just don't know. Like, I should I share this? Should I not share this? Do you have any examples of that? I do. And I'm not going to tell you what they are because I don't share them. Yes. <laughs> That's perfect. perfect. Um, I had this conversation with Amanda Bucci when she was on my podcast. And we were talking about how even when we are so open and we share and we are vulnerable, that doesn't mean we have to share everything. We still get to set those boundaries of what we want to share and what we don't. And I think that is something for us all to remember that even, even if I wanted to stop sharing about my children, I could do that because I can't el eliminate and erase everything I've already said, which I think you also want to be aware of, Hey, is it going to be okay that you shared this in 10 years? And we can never know, but are we right. still going to be comfortable talking about it? So um, I do share my stories a lot and I like to share them a lot of times in, so how we can relate to each other. So my keynote, cause I, I do a keynote, I'm a keynote speaker as well. And I share the story about losing Mark. I share the story about losing my job for the third time, losing my home, all of these things, because the variety of stories that I tell allows the audience to see themselves in one of those stories. So they may, they may not have lost a spouse, but they probably have been touched by cancer in some way. 
more often than not, I have at least one, if not several people come up to me and say they've gone through fertility issues. When they can see themselves in the struggle, then they can see themselves in the success. Mm -hmm. So being able to say, I've gone through this really hard thing. And so they see me talking about the hard things and then also the good things so that I'm not being defined as a widow, right. as a fertility warrior. Um, I'm all of those things. And so I think that's it. it. There's a little bit of, if I share this story, is it in service of something? I, I mean, I'm just now kind of talking this through with you, but is there a reason Right. If I'm, I don't think we want to get on our podcast and our social media and just like bitch and moan and think that, oh, we're being vulnerable because we're talking about our hard day, unless there's like a reason behind it, because then it just gets messy. And then people are just looking through your window and eventually that gets old, I guess is kind of where I'm going. It's like, Unless you have an incredibly interesting life. So for me, it is not what happened this morning with my kids is not interesting, right? (laughs) My son and my daughter fought and um, my other daughter just turned two. So she screams and with strong opinions, right? Like just sharing that is not interesting. But if I said, let me tell you that today I had to stop everything that I was doing. I'm working as an entrepreneur. I work from home and I had to go settle a dispute over which warrior won the split strike battle. And I do that and I work from home in order to be able to stop, spend the time with my kids and get right back to work. And if you are also a mom doing this, then you might. So like all of a sudden we're telling our stories in a way that actually benefits our audience instead of is just self-serving for us. Yeah. And this is so interesting because, well, first of all, I, this is why I love what I do because I get to hear your story and then I get to ask you questions about your story. (laughs) Like this is, this is why I love my podcast and why people love listening to the podcast because it's one of the things, because I think that so often we hear incredible podcast hosts, keynote speakers, And we want to understand, because I know there's a lot of people listening right now. They're like, I want to have a podcast. I want to be asked to speak on stage, or I want to get that yes to a pitch, you know, when, when I speak on stage, you know, have that opportunity. And so I love seeing the behind the scenes and the thought process of it's okay for me to share this because you've made that clear. And I think that boundaries are so important when it comes to your content, what you will share, what you won't share. And I love, by the way, that you have like the key things you're like, I won't share this with anybody. Cause I, I might have someday, stories too. No. Right. I might someday. That's it is we can yeah. let those, we can let those boundaries move and shift yeah. as we are comfortable. So we're defining our boundaries. We're not defending them. Oh, that's so good. And so we are saying, you know, I may at some point down the road talk about some things that right now I just don't, I don't, they're too personal, they're too close. Um, and and that's okay. Yeah, yeah. And I love that. I it's like the ebb and the flow, the evolution. That's really, and that's the thing that I've really settled on having created podcasts for several years now. I look at it it is a constant evolution. It's not just, oh, you have one big evolution once every five years. It's a constant evolution because we're in a digital space. Things are always changing anyway. And the consumer expectations of, you know, we want you to show up this way and now that way and, you know, have video, don't have video, be on TikTok, all the things. And it's like, oh my gosh, it's, it can be a lot for a lot of people. And that's honestly why people don't get started. So I want to kind of shift into that for a second, because I know with your method that it's really getting people to take action on either establishing these key parts of their damn life, right? It's like, this is like, you got to sit down and make things happen. So for somebody that's listening and they haven't taken action, maybe they're scared, maybe they're living in fear, or maybe they are in the thick of struggle right now. And they say, I just can't do one more thing. Do you have any advice for someone that's going through that? Yeah. I want to step back for one thing really fast because we were talking about how we see all these people doing the things and then we feel like we have to do it that way. That is part of why I have 
my methodology set the way I do is because I would hire coaches or I would join programs. And I'm like, okay, I have to follow this step by step by step by step. And then about step three, I'd be like, ah, I don't really want to do that one. And so I'd skip that. And then all of a sudden the whole, their whole system falls apart. Right. And that's why with me, it's like the damn manifesto is your what and your why, not the how, right? It's just, what do you want? And why do you want it so badly? And then, and so that's kind of where I want to start with this for you is, so if somebody's in the thick of it, or even they just like, I want to start a podcast, I want to do this thing. This is why you want to look at your what. So what is it that you want to share? I was just talking to one of my clients yesterday who wants to write a book and she was talking about, this is the title. And this is, I said, let's take, let's take a step back. What is it that you want to share? How do you want people to feel when they hear you talking, right? Like when they come to your podcast, are you trying to entertain them? Are you educating? Are you interviewing? What is it that you want? What is the message that you want to share? That's the what, and why are you so passionate about it? Then we look at the um, the how, right? So for me, it started out, I was just going to do digital courses. Well, then I wasn't doing that. I was speaking on stages and my book is out and the podcast, it was all, these are all the ways, the hows that I share my message. Mm -hmm. So the piece about the do the damn thing. So like kind of the third step, which is funny because you're doing it the whole time. But one of the things, so two pieces that will be really useful. One is movement is always more important than mindset. Mm -hmm. So I say movement over mindset. It does not matter you, how you feel. And so why I say that is like, you can feel scared and still get into action. You can be uncertain and still take action. When you have your damn manifesto, when you know what it is that you want, you can just move towards it. You can still, you're never going to not be scared. You're never going to not be uncertain ever. I still get scared. I just still take action. And the other part is I break everything down into micro actions. So a micro action is the smallest possible action that you will actually take. If you want to start a podcast and people are like, just record your first episode. No, mm -hmm. <laughs> if you're not doing it, if you're frozen, then it's not a small enough micro action. It's just sign up for a Buzzsprout account or whatever you're going to use um, just buy a microphone. If that's too much, if you're like, I can't even buy a microphone. Okay. Just look at three microphones and decide which one you want, right? You're just starting to take micro actions because everything that we do is just a series of micro actions strung together. But when we feel confident and we have the momentum, the micro actions are just bigger. You know, for you today, you're like, I'm just going to record this episode, right? You probably didn't think about plugging your microphone in and opening up Zoom and pushing record. You didn't think about all those things, but you still did them all. Yeah. So we break it down to the smallest possible action that you will actually take. And just if you're feeling paralyzed, just make a list of all those, set a timer for 15 minutes and just do micro actions for 15 minutes. And then at the end of that, you can be done if you want to. But what you'll find more often than not is the micro actions start to build the momentum and the momentum then takes you further. If you think about, we're about the same age, those death trap metal merry-go-rounds that were on playgrounds, you know what I'm talking about, right? Like they're all oh, super rusty now and 100%. like <laughs> now I think about it and I want to throw up just like thinking about it. But everybody, all the kids, you grabbed a handlebar. And the first few steps were the hardest. You had to like put a little bit of effort and you were taking little steps, little steps. And then as it got faster, you jumped on and it spun and spun and spun and spun. That's the part that makes you throw up now. But once you were on it, all you had to do is if it started to slow down, just push your foot out, hope you didn't break an angle, but give it a little <laughs> kick, right? And that kept the momentum going. What I realized about this as I told the story more and more about that is we didn't wait for the fun to get started. Mm. We took the first few steps knowing that the fun would come, not knowing when, but that's how we have to think about your podcast or whatever it is that you want to do. Let's just take some micro actions. Probably not going to be fun at first, right? <laughs> like, may not be great when you feel like nobody's listening to you. 
But if you keep taking the micro actions, the fun will come. This was, I feel like there was like three quotables. I'm like, oh, I got to go back and grab all that because I was so good. I love the movement over mindset. I mean, that's the tagline for this episode because that in and of itself is so good because I love that you said you can still be scared and take that step anyway and move forward with it because on the other side of that is the fun or it's the creativity. It's the confidence. Like the, so many people listening, that's all that they're really longing for. It's not the downloads. It's not, it's like, I just want to feel confident sharing my message and knowing that it's going to help someone because we, I'm so grateful that my audience is just a bunch of big hearted softies. They just want to help people (laughs) there. Y'all are so incredible. And so I love that Bevan is giving us these tools to the micro actions, just all strung together, just make for a bigger, maybe it's a bigger step in some cases, maybe Mm -hmm. it's a jump or a leap. But I love how you explain that so much. So I appreciate, I appreciate that. Oh, I'm so Well, good. confidence comes from results, right? So it totally makes sense yeah. that you aren't feeling confident, but you can feel courageous. You can feel brave. Or you cannot feel any of those things. You can feel scared and uncertain and still take the steps towards what you want to create, knowing you can pivot and tweak however you want, but you've just got to get into action. What I say often is that, you know, as you're thinking about this and you're like, well, maybe it's not the right time, or maybe the message isn't going to be received or whatever. We don't know, right? We never know what is going to happen tomorrow to, I mean, if the pandemic taught us anything, right? We never know what's going to happen to ourselves, our jobs, our friends, our family. That's not a reason to live scared. It is simply a reason to live fully. Can you say that one more time? That was so good. So we never know what's going to happen at any moment. And that's not a reason to live scared. It is simply a reason to live fully. That's beautiful. That's, it's really beautiful and it hits home. And I don't know if anybody's told you, you speak like you're, you're giving us a sermon. Like this is literally how I feel. <laughs> well, I and don't I'm mean like, preachy, but no, no, you. no, <laughs> absolutely not. Like I said, like, I am just like, you're so good at this, Bevan. And I know that you have some incredible conferences you're speaking at, you're doing keynotes. So if you're listening to this and you host events, make sure that you reach out to Bevan and see if, you know, her coming to your organization or speaking for you would work out because I just, I, I love hearing your story. I love hearing you talk and you are such an incredible, just a gift giver. I know that sounds kind of silly to say this, but I feel like that it's, you're giving all of us a gift by sharing your message. So I hope that that's validating for you that you're still on the right track. Like you're, you are sharing the message you're meant to, to share. And I'm just, I'm so appreciative that you are sharing it here with us today. This was incredible. One of my, when we talk about the six dimensional, why, and I think about my spiritual why, right. Which is your mission. It's not about religion is it is my soul's purpose to share this message. That And whenever I'm struggling and feeling like, oh, maybe I shouldn't be doing this or that, I come back to that and I'm like, no, this is, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. And it's why I love going to any conferences or, or sharing it virtually. And do I do these presentations for departments? Because it is important. We all need to know, like we take risks, right? We take chances and the chances never pay off until like we take the damn chance on ourselves. And that's why this, this message is what it is. Oh, this is so great. So great. And I know that you teach all this in your new book, which we're going to talk about in one second, but I have three rapid fire questions for you. Oh, you're going to do it. You're going to say, nope, these are the questions. These are the three questions. We do ask these to all of them, to all of my guests. So, okay. And they're super easy. So what piece of advice would you give to a brand new podcaster or content creator? That when you are, it's kind of, it's a little bit repeating what you just said, but if you're willing to share your story, what a gift you are giving somebody, because there is someone who is, who, how did somebody say it to me? What you're going through right now will become someone else's survival handbook. That's what there is somebody, 
no matter what it is that you're going through, what it is that you're going to share, somebody needs to hear that. And it is your soul's purpose to put it into the world. Wow. That's beautiful. That's great. Okay. My next question is what is the dream podcast you would love to be on? And who is your dream podcast guest you would love to interview? Oh my gosh. Okay. So my dream prior, this is not podcast, but my dream before it shut down, I wanted to so badly to be on the Ellen DeGeneres show. Oh, so I actually think she might be my dream podcast guest because I love the fun that she brings to things. I love her kindness. I know, and you know, look, I know that her show had some scandal at the end, but like her as a person, I just love that message. The podcast currently, my dream podcast would be probably one of them would be, we can do hard things. So Glennon Doyle's podcast, because I talk about that a lot. Like we can do hard just, be, and, and we just have to decide if it's the right hard or if it's the time to pivot. So that's what I'm going to say. And if she's listening, I would love to be a guest. Okay. We're throwing it out there, Glennon. And that's not <laughs> the first time it's been mentioned. So we're putting it out in the universe pretty hard here on the profit podcast. <laughs> Okay. My last question is, do you consider yourself a perfectionist? Oh God, not anymore. I used to be, and you know what? Having kids will teach you a lot of patience, but also will teach you we cannot possibly be perfect, right? I am not a perfect parent, but I am the perfect parent for my kids. And I think that's where, so I think there are places where I, I am very hard on myself and I hold myself to a high standard but then I have to also remember there is there's no such thing as perfect. I say this when we talk about the now is the time. There's never going to be a perfect Tuesday where it's like, oh, today is the day I should get started. So if there's never a perfect day, then why not today? That's so, so good. And I love the, I'm the perfect parent for my kids. Like that, the, for my kids, not anybody else's, not anybody else's, my kids. I <laughs> love that. I'm going to, I'm going to take that with me through. I'm going to go tell my husband that whenever we're, it doesn't mean this. I it's don't great. yell. It doesn't mean we don't struggle, <laughs> no, but I just know that I am the perfect parent for my kids. I also am laughing because I told you I can bring it all back to the framework when yes. you ask me. I'm like, so that's like the end. Let's talk. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Let's break it down. So for, Everybody listening, go create a framework and go grab Bevan's new book to help you create your manifesto. So can we talk about the book real fast? What is yeah. the name of it? And I know when this episode goes live, it will actually be available for people to purchase. So tell yes. us all the things about your book. So it's called Your Damn Manifesto, and it is to discover the keys to personal transformation and bringing your biggest dreams to life. And it walks you through my process of crafting your damn manifesto. So how do you figure out your yes? Because a lot of times we think we know it, but we've narrowed it down to quickly your six dimensional why. How do you craft it into that? Um, you can get it on Amazon, but you can also, once you do that, go to my website. So bevanferrand.com forward slash book. And then there's bonuses there. So you just enter in your, you know, your order number and then you'll get access to all the bonuses. So I'm so excited because this is a way for me again, to just share this message with as many people as possible in as many ways as possible. I have a coaching program. Some people aren't ready for the coaching program. They can buy the book, have a VIP day. They, if they, you know, so there's all these ways that the only thing I'm worried about is that this is sharing my message. That's so awesome. So we're going to link to ways for you to connect with Bevan, go buy her book. You have to like, as an author myself, I'm like, I cannot stress it enough. Like those purchases in the first month, the first 90 days of a book being out there are so important. So yeah. go buy the book, go read it and leave a review because Please, yes. Bevan will love you so much. And we will be so appreciative because it means so much to us, but thank you so much for sharing your message here with us today. And I wish you the best of luck in all of your upcoming keynotes and everything with your content. Well, thank you for having me. I love what you're doing here. And it's been my honor to be here. Wow. Right. Like what an incredible interview. What an incredible story. And Bevan, I am just, again, so grateful for you coming on and demonstrating what it's like to 
really live your true authentic self and share your message, share your story in a way that's so profound for other people. Like I said, at the very, very beginning, I remember when I first heard Bevan's story and it still moves me today in listening back to our interview. It's just such a beautiful demonstration of just human, like all of us being human. And I'm reminded that there's pieces of our stories that we can share that connect with our audience in really significant ways. And maybe you're like, well, Crystal, I don't have anything that's super profound. I don't have anything that is as, you know, I mean, let's just call it earth shattering that, you know, happened to Bevan. And you're just like, I don't know that I have stories like that to share. You don't have to like have these types of stories to share, but you do need to share human stories. And at the end of the day, I remember someone had told me that they had been listening to my podcast for a long time, but they knew that they wanted to learn with me and from me after I shared a story about wrapping Christmas presents and watching Emily in Paris last year. And I just thought it was so silly because it was like, wait, that was just kind of a throwaway comment. Like I wasn't, that wasn't in my notes to share that. I didn't have that in my script or my outline to say. I was just thinking about like, oh my gosh, yeah. And I just threw it out there. But it's part of how we connect to one another. It's the stories that we tell. So I hope that you check out Bevan, go follow her, go get on her email list, like go absorb everything that she has. She has her Facebook, her Facebook group. She has Instagram, just all the things. Go say yes to doing the damn thing. That's really what I want to see you doing. And reach out to her and say, hey, I heard you on the Profit Podcast. Let let us know, like take a screenshot where you're listening to this Share it on Instagram, tag me, tag Bevan. Let us know what your number one takeaway was from today's episode. But I'm so grateful that you're here and you got to hear her special message. But that's all I have for you today. So as always, make sure that you are subscribed or following wherever you are listening and keep it up. We all have to start somewhere. Hey, Profit Podcast listeners, thanks for sticking around a little bit after the episode to hear this special message because I want to hear from you. We are starting a new segment called Fan Mail Shoutouts, and I want to hear from you and I want to hear your questions. What do you want to know? What questions have you been dying to ask me? So here's how to make this happen. Go to the app where you're listening to this podcast right now. Go there. I'll wait a second. Okay. Now, once you're there, you're going to see a hyperlink at the top of the episode description that says, send Crystal a text message. And that's all I want you to do. Send me a text. It could be casual, informal. It could be totally anonymous. Or if you want, you can include your name and the name of your podcast or content, wherever you are creating. And I will give you a special shout out in an upcoming episode. So again, go to the show notes for where you're listening to this episode right now. And it will say, send Crystal a text message. And I cannot wait to hear from you and give you a shout out in an upcoming segment of fan mail shout outs.